Welcome back everyone for today's video. We are going to be doing something a little bit different. We are going to be playing against the new chess.com engine torch. Now torch has been around for a little bit chess.com bot Komodo. I believe that they updated and they came up with this new title of torch at any rate. It's been playing as a lot of the top computer programs. Currently it is significantly weaker than both stockfish and Leela, but nonetheless, it is a new program that does exist. So today we are going to be playing against torch and let's see how it goes all right let's jump right into the action and let's get the show on the road all right so we're going to play against torch we're going to play five minutes plus two second increment unrated games we're going to play two games and let's see if i can win or draw in either case let's go knight f6 here let's see what torch chooses to do we have d4 knight f6 could play c4 all right now i think in this game i'm going to try to have some fun play the king's indian probably won't work out very well but let's see what happens we get knight c3 i'm gonna go bishop g7 here waiting for the next move could play e4 it could play knight f3 it goes e4 all right now i'm gonna play d6 here pretty standard stuff so far multiple options knight f3 f4 bishop e2 bishop e3 now i do believe that torch does not have an opening book um or it's fairly limited at any rate so it plays h3 which is pretty reasonable i'm gonna castle now both bishop e3 and bishop g5 are playable i think he got slavon aronian in the sinkfield cup some years back he played h3 with bishop g5 but Torch plays Bishop E3 in this situation. So I'm going to go A5 here with the idea of Knight to A6, maybe E5 as well. And let's see what it does. Now, I think A5 is considered a little bit dubious, but maybe it's playable. Now, E5, I think, is a move that I'm going to play here. If trade, trade, Knight E5, I can play Rook to, Rook to E8, hit the Knight. I don't know for sure if this is good, but it goes D5. All right, so now I'm going to play the move knight to a6. The idea is to reroute a knight to c5, create some kind of bash in here. Very tough position to play after white goes g4, but maybe I can make it work. Now, torch plays bishop e2, which is definitely not the move that I expected. I thought it would go g4 right away. So now I'm going to go knight fd7 with the idea of knight c5, or maybe playing f5 as well. So it goes a3, which is a nasty move here, because now if I go knight c5, it can play b4, because after takes, 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 I lose the rook on the a8 square. As such, I probably can't play it. So I can play either rook to b8 here. d6 looks a little bit dubious. I actually think I'm already in quite a bit of trouble. So let's try queen to e8. Now, my reasoning behind queen e8 is to play for f5 here, maybe. Um, maybe there's also knight b6 somewhere here, like knight b6, maybe a move. Actually, I think I probably should have played knight b6 and knight c5 right away, but it is what it is. Now, if I go knight c5, b4 takes, 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 knight b3, queen d1, knight d4. Is that actually playable or not? I'm going to end up down a pawn with very limited play. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to play knight to b6 here. Idea maybe a4, idea bishop d7. Probably queen e8 was just a waste of a tempo, um, but maybe I can make it work. So it goes g5, which is interesting. I assume I can play knight c5 here, but bishop d7 also makes sense just to cut off any pressure on the queen side. Now a4 is a very serious threat to weaken, weaken this pawn structure. But I think if I go a4, it's going to play h5. Nonetheless, I think that I, I have knight c5, b4, knight a4, which is playable. Um, a4 is also a move. Uh, my gut says that I'm supposed to play something like knight c5 and knight a4. So I'm going to trust my instinct and go knight c5 here. If b4, I can play knight to a4. And if it plays h5, now it takes, which I really don't like. Um, I think I've actually got a pretty decent position here. After d takes c5, I can play like knight c8, knight to d6. There's also queen e7. I think it wants to trade maybe. Um, there is one problem which I realized, which is that in this position after trade, I could have some issues on the king side. So I think bishop g4 is a move. I don't really like it. Um, that being said, if I don't go bishop g4 and immediately put pressure on the king side, I'm worried that at some point it's just going to go like here, queen g1, queen h2, and mate me on the h file. So it plays knight h4, which is uh, upsetting, to put it mildly. Let's drop back to d7. I think bishop, g bishop g4 is just a bad move. Um, I think I'm going to have to reroute the knight to d6, and I'm really hoping that I don't just get mated here somehow. I mean, it looks really, really scary. I'm worried about some kind of stack on the h file. Very worried about it, actually. Not even kind of worried. I'm really just... I think I might just be losing long term. So he's going to stack the rooks, and... I'm in some trouble here, like maybe some real trouble. Let's go b6 to guard the pawn. I think I'm actually in real trouble here. I might even just be losing. This might just be lost. It goes rook g1. Uh, I guess I go queen e7. I think I'm going to have to try to maybe run my king out. 
but like f8 e8 if i can i think it's way too slow but it's what i think i'm gonna go i'm gonna try to run my king i'm gonna run i'm gonna run 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 as fast as i can here um and let's go here this i'm trying to get my king out of dodge i'm really trying very hard to get this king out okay let's go here if i can get my king just two more squares i can win the game just one two two more moves uh oh no i'm too slow uh oh uh oh i'm too slow oh no i'm gonna lose now uh oh uh oh i'm too slow if i could get my king to b7 i'd survive but now i'm just gonna lose i'm just gonna lose the game here and this is why the king's indian is such a bad opening we'll, we'll play the game out um but i'm gonna get crushed it's gonna trade go knight e5 sack and i my king's too slow i was trying to run this king to b7 get the king out but i'm one move too slow and he's gonna sack the rook play knight e5 and i'm just gonna get destroyed here very very bad game but it is what it is so i'm still trying with knight e8 let's take knight takes e5 i'm gonna continue to try to run the king out basically the same thing would have happened if i had left the king on g8 it would have just stacked the rooks and made me on the age file so i tried unfortunately so i think there's knight d7 which wins the game um because if i take with the queen there's bishop g4 and if i take i'll play it out just so you guys get to see it i'll take with the king even e5 and knight e4 is strong but this is probably just winning go king d8 probably f4 if rook h1 i maybe have queen g5 but even here i'm just i guess i'll go here and king e7 but e5 knight e4 is coming in I, normally i would resign the game at this point already but um because there's so many people watching they're probably wondering like why would i resign i'll go queen h8 probably f5 now breaks through on towards c7 i just have all these passive pieces so even though i have an extra rook for a bishop the rooks are way too passive and i'm just lost so i'll go knight e8 f6 wins e5 wins d6 wins rook d1 all roads here lead to rome now of course i can't even activate anything so um i mean normally i would just resign but let's let's just go like here i guess it's gonna go e5 e6 total disaster queen e5 let's go queen f8 to stop mate and one but now there's rook h1 or rook h8 with mate anyway he'll sack with second rook and i will be checkmated let's go here just so you guys get to see the nice double rook sack rook h8 takes and queen e7 is simply checkmate let's take and now queen e7 will be mate and that is definitely a little bit unfortunate so i lose this first game let's send a rematch let's see uh if it wants to play a second game it does okay so here um let's go back to basics i'm gonna play my hedgehog setups like g3 bishop g2 e3 try to keep this relatively slow and simple and not take too much risk in this position so it goes it goes um d5 here in this position which is pretty normal i will play bishop g2 now i kind of assumed that without an opening book some of my hedgehog setup should work but i could be wrong so i'll play d3 let's see what it does here it can play like maybe knight f6 maybe c5 okay that's not really what i want to say i was hoping it play knight c6 but alas you can't get everything you want in life go knight to e2 here probably b3 and bishop b2 on the next couple of turns plays h5 i'll go h3 to stop anything on the king side but it is being very aggressive and this is never a good sign um when you play against the computer when it starts pushing the pawns so i'm gonna go b3 go for the double fianchito here with the two bishops and maybe i can sort of get something halfway decent let's go here target the pawn play knight d2 but torch is very strong like it's putting me on a lot of pressure right away um playing like c5 with the three pawns and h5 very very hard to play this position for me so i'm trying to clog the center at some point now it goes d4 which i am very very happy to see um at least now the center is kind of semi-closed it goes g5 um i guess i'll play bishop c1 i'm hoping it plays h4 i really am um those castles knight f3 is not the move I want to play I think I'm gonna go knight to c4 hitting the pawn uh, I can play g4 if it wants I'm really hoping it pushes one of these pawns uh, I guess I'll go a4 here I really want it to play h4 that's what I'm that's what I'm really hoping for I mean either one of these pawn pushes but I guess I'll play bishop d2 here now I can try to walk my king to the queen side normally I would not play like this by the way but here um somehow I need to force it to play h4 that's what I'm trying to do I think I'm going to go f3 does give him g4 though uh I'll still play it anyway my idea here is to play g4 at some point if g4 I'll trade okay it goes h4 praise the lord now the king side is closed and now I'll be able to castle the king and now I'm probably going to have some decent chances 
to draw this game if I am precise. So it's going to go knight f8, knight g6. I think I want to force f6 at some point, like maybe queen c1. Although I guess knight g6 still is a move here, which is kind of annoying. Um, what I'm going to need to do effectively is I'm going to need to put the queen. Um, I'm going to need to put everything over here on the on the queen's uh, not sorry queen side, not king side. I'm going to try to put everything on the king side or the queen side, like the rooks over here, bishop on f1. And eventually, I'm hoping that I can maybe lock up the queen side, possibly. Start to have some, some similarities to some games that I played against the computer program Ribka many years ago. Now, I don't know if Torch is the same where at 50 moves, it will have a high contempt value, and it will try to um, keep the game going or not. But let's see what we can do. So I don't want to trade, because after takes, eventually, it will trade and go a6, b5. Um, I think I'll play bishop f1, queen e1 at some point as well. Really trying very hard to keep this queen side closed. I think I need to maybe go here and then stack the two towers. At least that's my goal. Now, at some point, I want to play a5 to lock the lock up the queen side. Probably what I also can do here is maybe try to trade the knights at some point. Like, I'm going to go rook a3. Maybe I just go rook a3 and rook a1 here as well. Eventually, I want to go maybe knight c1 and knight a2. To trade some knights i basically i need to stop a6 b5 if i stop a6 and b5 here i think i will have very good chances to save this game but again there are no guarantees so we get king g7 let's go knight c1 to play knight to a2 here and trade the knights i feel like i'm okay here at least that's my general read so it goes knight c6 so i'll play rook a2 here now mainly what my idea here is i just want to kind of sit on the position and not do anything crazy b6 very unhappy move to see in this position um i can play rook b2 and rook b1 my, my my gut says that probably i should just put this knight on e2 and try to play queen c1 maybe at some point even line up the legendary triple stack if possible that's not a move that i want to see either um let's go queen c1 what I'm wondering is if there's some way that I can kind of keep clogging this position up. Now, it plays a6, which, of course, is very, very bad news for me. That's not the move that I want to see here. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, this is getting bad. Um, I guess I'll play knight. My knights are so bad. Somehow I need to block this. Can I maybe give up a piece? I'm going to do something unusual here, okay, you guys? So I'm going to do something very original. I'm going to play queen d1. And I want to see after b5, knight c1, I'm going to sack a piece and try to close the center of the board like a genius. Probably this won't work, but let's see. I'm going to try to close the center of the board, and hopefully it doesn't play d3. If it plays d3, I'll be very unhappy and lose the game. But I don't think sacking a pawn is the best move in this position. So it plays a5. So I think here I can actually draw this game if I'm, if I'm super precise. Um, I think I should play bishop to d3. This makes sense. Actually, maybe bishop to d3 is wrong. No, I think it is wrong. Um, wait, no, I think I put the wrong piece there. I think I need to go knight d3. Don't tell me it's going to play d3 now. It's not going to. I'm going to go knight d3. I'm going to put my knight on b2 and my bishop on d3. That's what I'm going to do here if I can. Um, okay, it goes there. Now, the big question is if I trade and go bishop d3 is there a sacrifice now again in this position i can sack the rook on a2 and probably draw if it does not play d3 so i'm going to sack a rook here and hopefully i can draw this with bishop d3 like basically what i'm doing is i'm down a lot of material but i think if i get bishop d3 in there are decent chances to draw so step one is i'm going to play uh i'm going to play king to h1 Idea is that if I go bishop d3, there might be some f5 opening with e4. Goes bishop d7. Okay, now I will go bishop to d3. I'm trying to hold everything here on the um, on the king's side. Basically, what, I, what I'm assuming here is that after rook a3, I'm always guarding the pawn. And now it's just a matter of where to put the pieces to try and draw this game. I, I have queen e1 somewhere. I don't really ever want to go king h2 because of f5, so I think I'll play queen g1. Basically, I'm trying to anticipate f5, and hopefully it doesn't play it. I don't know if this is going to work, but I feel like I've got a little bit of a blockade here. So let's just go, I guess, queen g2 maybe. If knight f4, I'm definitely going to trade. Like, I'm kind of slightly optimistic that I can save this game, but I don't really know for sure. So I think what I also want to do that I just realized is maybe walk the king all the way over to the queen side to guard this b3 pawn so we can never sacrifice. Let's go king f1. 
And the other big question that I alluded to earlier is whether there's a contempt factor. And what I mean by contempt is that, is there a moment where the computer will try to sack with F5 since it's the only move that it can play to avoid the 50 move rule? So we get rook d8, let's go king d1. Um, I don't actually know if this is right or not, but I figure here I just want to sit on the position and just basically waste time. Okay, now it goes knight f4, so I think now I should definitely take. It will probably take with the e pawn, I assume. Um, and I'm going to walk the king all the way back to the king side now. So now what I want to do is maybe put the knight on f2 at some point, possibly, um, to stop him from entering on the uh, entering with f5 at some point. Goes queen b6. That's a very logical move. I think I'll play queen to. Maybe I'll play. Oh no, rook a2. I think I'll go rook a2 because if queen b4, I'll just block and trade. And I should be happy with the queen trade. Okay, it goes there. Uh, I guess I'll go back to f1 now. And I'm going to try to go knight d1, knight, knight f2. And try to hold the positions. Let's go knight d1. I want to go knight to f2 so that I can always guard these central pawns on both g4 and. Uh, g4 as well as um, g4 as well as uh, e4. So let's go here. Knight f2 and king g2 back. Trying really hard to save this. I don't think that it's going to sacrifice pieces, but again, computer is a big material advantage. So within its algorithms, it should want to sacrifice material at some point. Let's go king g2. Probably will get queen b4. I expect um, at some point. I don't know quite when, but it's what I expected to play. So we get bishop e5. So now I just have to make sure there are no sacks. I think. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to sit with the king on g2 and f1 here and just keep going. Now, I can play queen b4, but I can trade the queens. I also think I just start sitting and waiting here. If f5, I can just take and go knight g4 later on. And I think I have pretty decent chances here to hold this position. So now we're deep within the stage where last capture was move 49. So we're going to probably play close to 50 moves before it tries to push something. Main thing is that there are no entries here. Oh! We get the threefold repetition. Whoa, whoa. Um, uh, wow. So wait, Torch accidentally makes a threefold repetition. Um, I guess it's not paying attention to the repetition because Rook A B8 is a threefold. Um, now it would have been really interesting if this game had continued because what would have probably happened one sample line is somewhere down the road, eventually it would have probably played something like F5 at some point. Where I take on f5, it goes bishop h5, and then I think I still am holding this position um, because I can always just wait with the queen on e2. Now, it's a real shame that we didn't get this because, honestly, I would have been really curious to see what Torch was going to do here, whether it was going to go for broke and try to keep the game going or not. Um, but apparently, it just plays the threefold, which is a little bit surprising. Maybe some algorithm. I don't know. Um, but at any rate, the game does end in a draw. So a bit surprising that it didn't play it out, but hey, it is what it is. It's a draw. I'll take it. If I play two games, one with white, one with black, and I can get a draw, I'm pretty happy nonetheless. But it would have been great to see what would have happened if the game had continued. At some point, it would have played F5, though. We would have gotten something like this. And I don't know. I don't know if I would have been able to save the draw still, but I suspect that even in some position like this, I would have had a light square blockade, and eventually it still would have been a draw. But the computer accidentally makes a threefold, or maybe it didn't see a breakthrough and it just re repeated. Maybe it's an algorithm or a bug, whatever it might be. But the game does end in a draw. So on that note, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video of me playing against Torch, the new chess.com engine. Um, that is available now. I think it's available for analysis as well, if I'm not mistaken, on chess.com. Perhaps it's not widely released yet, but it will be available very soon if it's not already. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Make sure to smash that subscribe button below. I'm sure that I will play against Torch very soon in the near future, since I think this probably is some bug that they need to fix. But at any rate, we get one draw and one loss, and I'm pretty happy with the result. So make sure to smash that subscribe button below once again, and I'll be back very soon with some more great YouTube-only content. See you guys. Bye.